Hello friends. My name is Ann Ledgerwood and I am a pediatric physical therapist living in Southwest Virginia in the Appalachian Mountains. Um, I am here this evening to let you know about my new channel that I have, which will be doing lots of things. We'll be talking about uh, development, motor development, um, all kinds of different development. I'll probably be interviewing some folks to talk more about that so that we know ways to help our kids. Um, so, I, my, my background, I graduated from college in 1980 from the Medical College of Virginia slash Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond and have been working full time for the most part since then, um, mostly in pediatrics. So I do have a lot of things I have learned hopefully along the way. I've definitely seen lots and lots of children and lots of families over the years, which it has been an incredible journey for me and a pleasure and a privilege in every way. So I've worked in school systems. I've worked in early intervention, which serves the birth to three age group in natural environments, which most of the time is at home or perhaps in a daycare facility or at a playground, something like that. I've also worked in clinics. I've also owned two different practices and I have um, just really enjoyed my time. It's been a blessing beyond description. So part of what I will do on this channel will be to talk about different things related to children. Some of that will be related to developmental areas such as, you know, motor development, language development, a cognitive development, social development, all types of things like that. Part of what I want to do is be able to, to um, interview some experts in the field, especially some of my dear colleagues and friends who really do a great job and, and have blessed the kids of our area immensely. So that's one thing that I want to do is just share some ideas. Part of why, why is tummy time so important? You know, that's a question. We hear a lot about tummy time. Why are screens so detrimental to our children? It's another thing we hear a lot about. So that's part of what will happen. Secondly, I'm also a musician. Um, my husband, David, and I, we sing and play a lot. And some of what we do is related to children's music. And I have sung songs over the years to families and to and many of my colleagues have heard them and have asked me would you please record those songs someplace so that we can find them and i have searched the internet well to the best of my limited ability <laughs> and i um, have not found any of them so that's part of what you will also find on this channel um, we do acoustic music and we also because we're crazy old people we also have an electric blues rock and roll band go figure but anyway, it's a lot of fun and a fun thing for us to do together. The third thing I want to do through this channel is to share my love of reading and my love of writing. In terms of the reading, um, I love to read aloud. And I think it's really important that, that adults read aloud to their kids. I just think that's really important. I have great memories of childhood and having my mom and dad read to me. I know that I read to my boys when they were little and I read to my granddaughter Riley also when she was small. So I just think that's an important thing and maybe something we've, we've missed out on or that uh, with the so much technology, we kind of lost some interest in some of the really special, simple things of life. So hopefully I'll be able to help some with some ideas for that. Along those lines, I have self-published, written and self-published four books. They're all available on Amazon. If you want them, we can, I can get you the link, but it, this is really not about that. This is about trying to help people learn to love to read again, or maybe for the first time, perhaps for the first time. So the books that I wrote all started because my granddaughter Riley uh, I would pick her up and take her to music lessons with Miss Janet and uh, piano lessons. And then we would go to church. We'd have dinner and we'd go to church. And we did that for a couple of years. And I liked to tell stories and she liked to be in those stories. Of course, it was really fun. And <clears throat> so for her 13th birthday, 
which has been a few years ago because she's about to turn 20, which is hard for me to believe. But when she was about to turn 13, I thought, well, I'm just going to write her a story with her in it, and then I'll self-publish through Amazon, which is quite easy to do these days. So that first book is Oatmeal and Oatmeal and Lavender. Here it is. Um, aren't, isn't that a beautiful cover? That is illustrated by a local artist, Jonathan Davis. So it's really amazing. Uh, so the story is about a little girl named Annie Beth who is in foster care and is very lonely and doesn't talk. And then she meets a friend named Riley who is one of those kids that kind of has it all, so to speak, you know. She's popular and has lots of friends, has a stable life. So they become friends. So that's what this first book is about. This, and I enjoyed it so much that I decided to do it again. So I wrote this book, Coral Music. And this is the follow-up to the first one, Oatmeal and Lavender. And they're, uh, these books I, I learned from my stepson, Alex, they're, they're written in what's called magical realism. So they're real stories. Well, not true stories, but they perhaps could be. But there are magical elements because the animals in these books have magical powers and talk to one another and all that type thing. So this book is uh, Andy Beth gets adopted and then it talks about other things like uh, fear and failure and um, overcoming. That's what this one is about. The third one is called Oatmeal from the Other Side. And Oatmeal is this bird. And of course, Jonathan Davis did all these great covers. Oatmeal is a big character in all these stories. And uh, this story, this is the great white owl. And then the animals travel back and forth to this magical place called the other side. So this story really is from the perspective of the animals. So the first two books are from the perspective of the children. It's in first person actually from Annie Beth. And then this book is the parallel story to the first two from the perspective of these magical animals, okay? So then my fourth one, I just enjoyed doing it so much, I decided, well, you know, I think I might try to write a little bit longer of a book, and so I did. So this one, Strawberry Heaven, is a middle reader novel. It was published in November of 2023, so just very recently, and it has lots of, you know, more more development of certain topics. It's still in first person through the eyes of Annie Beth, who, uh, as I mentioned, was in foster care and adopted and experienced some childhood trauma. Um, this book also gently talks about uh, difficult things such as alcoholism and domestic violence through the eyes of a child. So it is perfectly fine for a child to read and actually written for middle readers, really designed for, for adults to read along with their kids so they can talk about these difficult things. There's also a character in this book that has cerebral palsy. Her name is Aurora, and that's just a real important part of who I am. I have lots of friends who have, um, who have disabilities and uh, have to do things in a different way. So I just really wanted to include that to help children begin to understand that we don't all have to be the same, that we're all um, made in God's image, we're all beautiful, we are different and that's okay. And just trying to understand that a little bit more. So that's what we have going on on this channel. You're gonna be hearing lots of different things, including some reading out loud, some therapy tips, some developmental tips, um, and I'm going to be interviewing some people, and we will be doing some songs. So songs that you can sing along with your kids, um, some projects that you can do that are really, really simple to take the simple things that you have just around your house and make something really fun for kids to do. I mean, simple things. You don't have to go spend a whole lot of money. And really what kids want is you. They want the attention of the adults in their life. They want you to sit and read with them and put your phone down. They want you to tell them stories. They want you to go outside and play with them. So this that's part of my goal is to be able to give us tools and tips of maybe ways that we can, can find 
some of those things again in our lives because they're so, so important for children. Children need love. Children need, they need safety. They need, and this is a saying that I have kind of come up with and a lot of my friends know that I say this. Children need consistent, loving boundaries and how we find that and how we're able to provide them with that stability impacts them for a lifetime. So again, thank you for tuning in for this introductory video. It might be a little longer than I intended, but uh, the first other video I'm gonna put on is I'm going to read out loud Oatmeal and Lavender. It'll That one will take about 30 minutes. So uh, feel free when you pull that up, if you want to uh, just listen or, or not, it's okay. This is all really designed to try to help us as a culture and as families to be able to to really give our kids what they need. So again, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you listening. Feel free to share this with other people and I will have try to put one or two posts a week. I'm still working full time, so I won't be able to do a whole lot until I do get retired one day. So anyway, thank you all so much and stay tuned for more.